and kind of our common conception is that you think this bigger, larger muffler would be more restrictive. We're gonna show the people that's not always the case. What we're gonna show today is that the smaller uh, four inch round here straight through and our five by eight straight through two and a half inch core are really gonna be the same as far as airflow capacity. What's going on guys? It's Justin here with Summit Racing and we're here at Magnaflow with Rich and we're learning all about different kinds of muffler science today. And kind of our common conception is that you think this bigger, larger muffler would be more restrictive. And um, we're gonna show the people that's not always the case. Yeah, and that's something that uh, goes into play here is that uh, because it actually might be quieter, that means it's gotta be more restrictive. And it, what it really depends upon is in the internal design and what we're gonna to show today is that the smaller uh, four inch round here straight through and our five by eight straight through two and a half inch core are really gonna be the same as far as airflow capacity. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on the flow bench and kind of determine what that benchmark is and show that this is about the same. And what that'll also show is that, you know, we know this one at two and a half times the volume is gonna basically be a quieter muffler, but that doesn't mean we're hurting performance. So let's take a look here. Right about 505, just over 500 total CFM. Man, that's crazy that that thing flows like that. That's a, that's a lot of air. And now with the five by eight, same core, we should get basically the same number. Looking just over 505, small changes here and there, but for the most part, the amount of air that flows through each of these is basically identical. And even though this is gonna be a quieter muffler, it doesn't mean it's not gonna flow any worse or better. And I think that's a misconception that people have. And you know, they're like, well, then if that's the case, how come when I see race cars, they usually have these in there? And I, I like to uh, put out there that it's probably more an effect of the weight. When you got something that weighs a little over, you know, three pounds versus something that might weigh up to 14 pounds, the race car wants the airflow. Yeah, They're every, the same. every pound matters. But the weight, saving 10 pounds on two mufflers, that's 20 pounds of weight savings. And that's why they'll sacrifice overall sound control for weight because the muffler is simply there. And that's the other thing too, is packaging in race cars, it's about size as well. The physical shape may not fit well, and that's why they'll go to the smaller muffler. So they're gonna sacrifice a few things in race cars, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's because of the performance. And what I do wanna take one more step in looking at is how does that internal we talked about affect what goes on in airflow? It's not always just, hey, this is a center center. Sometimes we have offsets that actually change the airflow and that does have a small effect. And we're gonna measure out exactly how much. Heck yeah. Like I said, they're so, this is so crazy. And like I said, I, if, if you wanna ask me and I was a betting man, the bigger muffler would have been, I would have told you, when it flowed half of what the small guy does. And that's typical, and there is a case where that's the what we've seen, and that's why understanding what goes on inside the muffler is just as important. So here inside, I forgot to show you, this is a straight through muffler, but it has a kink in it. That bend is so that we can have an offset and a center inlet, and that's something that's so that we can get better sizing and fitment, but that change in airflow is gonna disturb the airflow, and you're gonna see how much that impacts it. So we're seeing about 475. Now that's a drop from the 505 that we saw with the straight straight because one, it's a little longer tube because it is bent inside. So there's overall longer length, but two, we're disturbing the airflow and causing it to move in a different path and creating more turbulence, which will affect sound, but it also will affect overall airflow. So that is one step. The next one will be what happens if we move the offset completely over. So now we have our offset, offset. So no longer is it in the center. We're putting even another 10 more degrees in there to move it over even further. And in that process, we're gonna see the airflow slightly affected as well. Adding 10 degrees, adding 10 degrees. We actually took this to about 380 uh, CFM, which is almost 90 CFM lower than the offset center. So we are giving up more airflow to make this change over here. So really, if you're talking about packaging on a vehicle and we really have an issue with size and fitment, this extreme is gonna cost you a little bit more airflow. And that's something to take in consideration when you're talking, this is still a two and a half inch inlet, two and a half inch outlet, which is interchangeable, 
but this will flow less than the straight center center. Uh, the capacity of that though, typically speaking with mufflers, we're talking about wanting about two CFM for every horsepower we're trying to sustain. So here we found out this flows around 505 CFM. For the sake of discussion, let's call it 500 CFM. If you had a dual exhaust with two two and a half inch exits, means we have 250 horsepower that we can support on each side. That's a 500 horsepower car that you can support with a two and a half inch dual straight through muffler. Now, if we go offset offset, we're talking about this being at about 385. So let's cut that number in half. We're talking about 190 uh, horsepower per bank. We're talking just shy of 400 horsepower. So we're still talking something pretty close to a 400 horsepower car. But anything beyond that, we're gonna start limiting how much total airflow, which also means we're gonna limit the capacity of unrestricted or unrestricted uh, total power of the vehicle. The biggest thing to look at though, in what our last product line we offer in our Rumble product, this is a chambered muffler. Now what's different about this muffler is it is not a straight through. Actually, let's take a look at that. Uh, you'll see that there is no flow through area. This has basically got a brick wall <laughs> that sits right here and you can see the welds and then air is directed around. Now it'll get a very different sound because it's a non-packed muffler, but the air has to work its way around, fill the chamber and then come back down, compress and exit. In that process, it will change how much total capacity it has and let's take a look. So we're looking about 310 to 315 ish uh, total CFM, which is a big drop from 500 uh, or even on the offset offset down at 385. So what does that tell you? That although the casing size is larger here and it flows less, it is more about what the internal is than just the size of the muffler outside. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to learn about all the different variations in these mufflers and the CFM flows. Like it's, um, you know, I never would have thought that those two could flow 500 CFMs. That right. is a ton of air. Yeah, it's not only just the tubing size on the outside, but it's the internal that really determines your total airflow. So head over to summitracing.com and see the full line of Magnaflow product and pick something up for your ride. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Summit Racing YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any content like this and punch that notification bell so you're the first to know. As always, I'm Justin with Summit Racing. Thanks for watching and the golden question is, what are you working on?